Pastor, I don't give up. Don't give up in your children. Don't give up in your job. Listen to me. I want to hear you say amen. amen. If you are watching this, I want to hear you say amen. Come out from the camera and say, don't give up on what you are going through. Amen. The windows of heaven must stay open. Amen. I said, your windows of heaven must stay open. Amen. I said, your windows of heaven must stay open. Amen. Instead of curse, blessing. Amen. I said, instead of curse, you will see blessing. If you are hearing me today, your harvest will know no limit. Amen. If you are hearing me today, if this is a trick of the devil, even if it's not much about you, come on, let the children and the grandchildren and the great grandchildren have so much left over. Are you with me today? I speak over your mind. You shall not be sorrowful. I can hear you. I'm talking to you tonight. I said, You shall not be sorrowful. A day will come. Those tears will be wiped away. You will look at your garden. You will ask yourself, how did this come about? Our imagination is now taught to ever comprehend the size of your mightiness. The Lord, it is humbling to see that you have your spirit in us. When we look at creation, if we are given the privilege to write, we can't even cover it. You spoke the word into existence. Amen. You are God by yourself. Amen. Revealing yourself to us in the spirit. Making yourself known. You said, they that seek me will find me. We know we have your breath in us. That's the reason why we're standing here this morning. Amen. According to your word, we declare this is the day that you have made. Amen. And we speak into it that we might and we always rejoice. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The sorrow of this day is not our portion. The arrow of the enemy of this day is not our portion. Amen. That would belong to us is for us to rejoice Amen. and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way this morning as we go to prayers. Amen. We stand in one accord this morning. Amen. And we believe your word that said if we agree in touching things, it's done. And we know there are activities, there are things going on. Because your word has said to us, we should not be ignorant. There's an enemy, a common enemy against the kingdom of God. And that is the devil and his agents. But we stand with the authority you have given us. We stand against it. We reject their plans. We modify their agendas. And your word said, no weapon form shall prosper. Amen. We stand in that word this morning and we declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You may be seated. We are going to be praying this morning and looking into the word of God. Turn your Bibles. To the book of Acts. The scripture has been given to us for inspiration, for correction, for instruction, for rebuke. It's like the manual that we need to go through to piece our lives together. It is very important that our spirit be open to the word of God and to receive it and to know that every word that the Lord has spoken is true. We must believe 
need the word of God. And let us not pick any part apart and choose what we believe and what we don't believe, even when we don't understand it. Acts chapter 2, we're going to be reading from verse 12. The theme of this month is Isaiah 58, verse 6. The fast that God has chosen. This is the fact. Brethren, if the Lord has spoken that fasting is not important, He will have us do it. It is part of the kingdom. Jesus fasted. The prophets of old fasted. Esther fasted. We could see results. It is very important that we understand that the enemy we are dealing with, the devil himself, needs to be rooted out. Verse 1. Now, about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex setting of the church. So a king stretched forth his hand to do what? To vex the church. What has the church done? The church is not in his palace. Neither is the church on his way. Or the church is taking his business. The church is about Jesus' death and resurrection. And many don't want to hear it. If people are given power and authority to the king, there are many today that will make a law to close down the church. If there are people, if they have the power, if they are privileged to make decisions, even in a speech, when you make a speech, people can applaud. But when you put Jesus into that speech, it becomes offensive. When you put Jesus into it, it, it becomes a, 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 an offense, a, a, a law behind it that says somebody's not comfortable. That I know the only one that's not comfortable when the name of Jesus sounds. And that's the devil. Amen. The kingdom of darkness can be comfortable when light shows up. Amen. We must understand it. So each time, that is the reason why the name of Jesus must constantly be lifted up in your life because it reveals what is in the dark. He exposes many things. Philippians says, that name has been highly exalted. Give him a name above, beyond any other name. If you want things to come that in subjection to the will of God in your life, mention that name. Find a way to recognize that name. The Bible says, it says acknowledge me in what? In all your ways. And I will direct your path. The reason why we don't get direction is because we fail to acknowledge Him. And not only acknowledging Him, we make our ways. And then we acknowledge the Lord. Or we have a mind set up and made up. Then we bring in the Lord to be a backup. When we acknowledge the Lord, we wait patiently. For direction. When you give somebody the address of where you're going, ask for direction. Wait patiently for the person to give you direction. Are you with me? When you give an address, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for number five, Maple Street. Do you just get in your car and start going? Wait for the person to tell you, get on this road and get on this road. Your own is to give your address. The one that gives you direction has his own role to play. 
they will have to wait. If not, you're going to be wandering. We must not be those kind of believers. In one minute, I want you to pray, say, Lord, teach me to wait on you. Just pray that prayer, say, Lord, teach me to wait on you. One of the problems we have as believers is that we rush. And as we rush, we manipulate things. We rush, we begin to see roads in our head where there are no ways. We begin to create paths where there are no paths. Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait on you. The Bible says, when I wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. When you truly wait on the Lord, you won't miss your way. It might take a while. But we will find your destination. So Lord, teach me to wait on you in every area of my life. Amen. Amen. Teach the church to wait. Because just as God has ways for you, the devil has his way set up. Yes. It's quick. The devil will hurry you up. Rush and get it. That the way that seemeth right, the Bible says the end of it. It seems right. The Bible says it's not a way that is right. It looks right. It seems right. It appears right. It looks good, but it doesn't make it right. We don't look for ways that seems right. You are not looking for ways that looks right. You are not looking for ways that appears right. You are looking for the right way. You must bring in Jesus into it. Amen. If you are hearing me tonight, step on your brake. If Jesus is not in that car, stop and call on him. He says in his word, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If he is not in that boat, you won't survive the storm. If he is not in that boat, you will survive the rain. Amen. If he is not in that boat, you will survive the wind. He said, I am the way. Amen. And when you wait on the Lord, it's never your time. It is his time. And when the Lord comes true for you, he will preserve you. Amen. And there are people that rises up against the church. I want you to pray. Say, Lord, teach me to wear you. This is a prayer that you lift your heart and your voice. Say, Father, teach me, Lord, to wait on you. Help me, Lord, to wait on you. I need your voice. In the time that we are in, we need to wait on the Lord. That's what the church means. And when the Lord gives you direction, you have peace. When the Lord gives you direction, you have assurance. When the Lord gives you direction, you have strength. When the Lord gives you direction, you have wisdom. When the Lord gives you direction, He has grace and mercy accompanying you. And He will give you a sign. That even when you are stumbling and falling, you have a sign in your hand to keep going and pressing on. Amen. The songwriter says, I feel, I feel like going on. I feel like going on. When troubles comes from every side, I feel like going on. Troubles will come on every side, but because of the sign in your hand, you keep going on. You keep pressing on. You keep stepping forward because you're not letting go that side. The Bible says when the disciples were in that ship, they had Jesus to call. If Jesus wasn't there, that ship would have overflowed. It would have overturned and they would not have survived. 
the, the, the Jesus was with them in that boat. The one that calms the storm and the one that can stop the rain. Amen. Do you have him in your boat? Sometimes we don't need him there. We don't want him there because what we're trying to do is not compatible to his word. He can come later when there's trouble. That's not how it works. Brethren, we must understand that. And it's very important that we pray it from the depth of our heart. Hallelujah. So they vest, he vest the church. Verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John. And many will wonder why did he, why, why did God allow that to happen? Don't you know this gospel has come through many people? You, this Bible in your hand came through many dying for it. This word of God came to you and I by many sacrificing their life so this word of God can move forward. Can the church shout amen this morning? Amen. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse 3. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded, he saw that it was pleasing to some people. I speak to you this morning, if you are hearing this teaching, as we go into prayers, if he's made a law today that all churches close down, there are people that will throw party. I am showing it, there are people that will bring down their barbecue grill and decrease some neighborhood barbecue celebration. So I mean, finally, it's about, you will hear people come and say, it's about time. Even the very church folks, even the ones that eat fish and bread with you, you say, finally, I don't have to be bothered. Instead of us to have multiple barbecue every weekend now, we have to fast. But there are things in our lives that the world can give you. And when you come to Jesus, you know what he says? He said, I will laugh at your calamity. Because no one can mock him. It pleases them. And they say, wow. I never knew people could be happy. For the death of a man that preaches the gospel. You know what I mean? We don't want to hear his voice anymore. Too much of these church folks. I want to say something to us this morning. To nations and to kingdoms and to cities. The Lord has a voice. He will speak to you in the things that your, your economy your money, your military can fix. He's the God of the thunder. He's the God of the rain. Amen. All you need to do is drop some few rains. Huh? Are, you, are you with me? Yeah. Go and read the days of Noah. They that were laughing at Noah were crying later. Yeah. The Bible says the coming of the Lord will be like the days of Noah. Huh? All this time, no prayer, no prayer, no Bible. God have mercy. You will see people holding hands in corners and cities with police officers and firefighters and everybody looking for that girl. Who are you praying to? Do we need disaster to know that it do exist? It's a dangerous thing to fall into the hand of Almighty God. We must remember, He made the heavens and the earth. We must understand one thing, the earth is not the only planet He made. And He can choose to squeeze it and put it aside. He has how many more? There are many more planets. If the earth is rolled away, He did not lose anything. He is God by Himself. He said, let everything that has breath praise him. Heaven and hell is real. And those two places are for eternity for every living soul. Amen. And it gives you to choose where you want to be. Heaven and hell 
man is real. There's no shortcut to it. There's a standard that he has set. He whose name is not in the book of life cannot enter. Here is this morning, brethren. Some of you might not be deceived. Your donation to the church will take you to heaven. Your wealth and riches will take you to heaven. Actually, you said the standard, the condition, have mercy on the rich. Because their problem is as the eyes of the little, so shall it be difficult for them. Because there's so much into their riches than the Spirit of God. So when you are rich, tremble more in His presence. Don't you know many times the rich have few things to pray about? Because their money sells everything they want to. If you are rich, you can order your pizza from Italy every weekend. Your breakfast could be delivered from London every morning. You have money, you can have it done. There are people ready to carry it out. Are you with me? Don't you know there are people that are ready their breakfast come from another nation every morning? Yes. There are kings that their breakfast comes from other nations. Before they wake up, the food has arrived. Why there are people that have to walk two hours with mother and children just to get a breakfast? I am speaking something to our knowledge this morning. And so, killing a child of God will not improve anything. The work of God will still move forward. The prayer we are going to be going to this morning, we are going to see what and when the hand of God moved, because he saw what he did, he went after the leader of the church, the pastor, Peter, the disciples of Jesus Christ, one of the front runners. He said, Let's capture that one. If John could bring much excitement, if the killing of James could amuse and bring much excitement, how much more will we get Peter? Let's get a big fish. The Bible said he went and apprehended me. And sometimes you see some mockery people who say, if it's really God on his side, if you really know Jesus, why did Jesus not save him? We must recognize what the scripture says. There's suffering that is part of this work. They that must live right must suffer persecution. It's a package. Anybody you see on top of the hill and there is no scratches and scars in their elbow and knee run from them. They can't pull you up on them. They landed there through other means. Scars on your knees and your elbow is an evidence for you to get up there and appreciate how far you've come. It speaks loud. It has a voice. Anybody you see with a degree, university degree, and never went to college, and never sit down to study, please run. I'm a doctor. But I never went to medical school to train. I just thought about it. I feel like I could, I could have the same dress and put on a stethoscope on my neck and walk around. Don't open your body for them. I'm speaking to you in wisdom, spiritually. Peter was apprehended. Proceeded to take Peter, verse 3. Also then were the days of your living bread, verse 4. And when he had what? Apprehended him. He did what? He put him in a prison. That a prison that they keep specially for godly leaders. Not ordinary prison. Because the leaders are like souvenirs. A trophy. It's like a one. Getting there. And when he had approved, apprehended him, he put him in the prison and delivered him to what? Four quadrants of soldiers. Are you with me this morning? To keep him intelligent. 
afterward he started to bring him forth to the people his intention is to do to Peter what he did to James because he made the people happy Peter therefore was kept in prison but what was going on what was going on prayer was what made prayer was made what prayer was made what with, prayer was made without ceasing of who of the church unto God for him Amen. there are many pillars today in prisons all over the world there are missionaries today that are in prison Amen. there are Christians today that are locked up in prisons there are places communist places that you can't even carry your Bible or speak of Jesus Christ there are people Christians Brethren, who is that church that will stand on the gap for them? Amen. This is the fast that the Lord said He has chosen to do what? To set the oppressed what? Free. To break every yoke. The church prayed without ceasing. The Bible says they prayed once in a while. No, they took it upon themselves. It became what abounding to them. It became a weight, a, a concern. How many truly care? How many truly wish and desire that godly leaders not be apprehended? I was watching on the news when a pastor was arrested. And they were dragging him on the floor. And there were people standing applauding to the officers. They were clapping their hands. They were hailing the officers. Because he stood for the gospel. And yet that's it. They are clapping for the arrest of a godly man. And the bread in them belong to that God. What a mystery. God have mercy on those that sold things for generations. Amen. Can you imagine three, four generations of those people will never know that my father was clapping one time a man of God was arrested. My mother was there clapping his hand when a man of God was being dealt with a good uh, I, I was part of those that, that went there to vandalize that and attack the church and they laid those things down and it's in their blood system to go through generations to come iniquities that ended up the children of the Amalek to be wiped out when the Lord told Saul go and destroy them I am speaking to us today and we declare today every godly leader Head up in nations, in prison, hold up, willing to be destroyed, to be to be killed for the gospel. We stand as a church to declare their freedom. Amen. We stand as a church to ask the power of God to go forth in that prison Amen. and break those gates open. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we stand as a Amen. church to declare their release, to break every force that holds them down in the name of Jesus Christ. We stand as a church and that is the prayer for today. To let those oppressed go free. Women and children to let them go free. We lift our voices this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says Hallelujah. Verse 6, as the church were praying, verse 6, and when Herod would not have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping. Look at, not only were gates put in to prevent him from coming out, soldiers were assigned to stand next to him, even in his sleep. That is the estate the enemy can go. 
to make sure the church is suppressed. The name of Jesus is not lifted. Standing next to him, two soldiers guiding him even while asleep. Bound with what? When we are talking about prayer against chains, chains, chains do exist. Why? What do you think the devil, the enemy, does with chains? You think they want to wear it on their neck? You know the chain is shiny or beautiful? No, they keep these things. They have places, brethren. Physical chain is the least you talk about. There are people bound on that spiritual chains. There are territories of what? Spiritual chains in the realm of the spirit. There are Christians today that their mind is bound in chains. I think to be Christian by the form of godliness to come out and serve the Lord. There's a chain that we don't see. The mind in chain, the thought is in chain. The devil used issues to chain them. They live in self. Believing that they are doing the right thing. These are, these are chains that need to be broken spiritually and what? Physically. Irrespective, they, 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 they need a fashion of the word of God that is so twisted that justify that they are doing the right thing. Those are chains. We pray they are broken this morning in the name of Jesus. The most dangerous thing is the physical chain could be removed. What about the spiritual chain? Boundary chain. The seven and keep him before uh, and keep her before the door, kept the prison. The seven and behold, the Lord authorized his angel. The angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light sh shined in the prison. The light shined in the prison. The light shined in the prison. Amen. I don't know if you can see that this morning. The Lord shined in that prison. Amen. The Lord is shining in that prison. Amen. Jesus is shining in that prison. Amen. He is the one that can set free. He is the light. When he appeared to Saul on the road of Damascus, what happened? The light shined. That light that comes from Jesus came in that prison. Chains can only respond to his presence. He made it all. He created it all. And smooth Peter on the side. And raised him up, saying, Arise up, quickly. Did the Bible say he removed the chains? He told him to rise up. Father, wherever they are right now, families, ministers, pastors, all over the world, the remnant of God, the body of Christ, wherever they head down, spiritually and physically, we decree and we declare them rising up. Amen. Every chain, every chain in them, we declare them fall. We declare them fall in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up! Quickly! And his chains fell off from his hands. How can a man sleep chained to the ground? Not only do you have prison guards. We know how the prison system works in this country. The moment they are, you are locked in the prison, they remove the chain. Am I right? Yes. They free their hands. Even if you are on death row. You have your own, and you see some of them even on death row still able to do work out inside their prison. Do exercise. They feed them where they have a life. But for the gospel, they chain them to the ground. Not only are they two God chained to the ground and so they are standing next to him. You know what I mean? It's not just chain. They want to mentally chain him. They want him to have an image in his head of the fact that a, a kind of a humiliating image that will break down his value and his faith. It's not just those so they are standing there. They are not beating, they are not doing anything. Just their presence to subdue him mentally. Amen. 
Because that chain was good enough. It doesn't have what it takes to break it. But what are the stories standing there? Sometimes you know the presence of things is just to break you down to the point that you don't even feel like praying because you feel nothing can be done. That I speak to you this morning, those chains are broken. We are praying this morning. This one is coming to us and our spirits will be lifted praying. There are things that want to be present in your life to mentally break you down. Because those two soldiers were not needed. Watch. The two soldiers were standing. The other one was on the guard standing at the door. They want him to see it. He is in chain. He can move. But visually, he has to have those soldiers in the mind. So that he can take a whole different form inside him. That will really break him and say, I have no chance. Do you know if those soldiers were not there? It's only in chain. He said, possibility we need to press it. Lord, I could be free if these chains are removed yeah. and I can escape from here. Yeah. But the thought of escape is far from it yeah. because his mind is structured to say, even if these chains are gone, these guys are going to kill me. Yeah. I stand no chance. That's what is done mentally. And when you experience that, it drives you into the state of a deep depression, of an eternal defeat. Yeah. Then you hear many say, oh, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think my prayer can be heard. I don't think I can overcome this. I don't think this is possible. We are praying today. Every chain of the mind, Amen. every chain that the enemy uses to hold down leaders, godly leaders, Ministers, those that stay in the forefront of the gospel will declare those chains broken. Amen. In your home, will declare them broken. In your marriage, will declare them broken. In your health, will declare them broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the fast that the Lord has chosen. This is the moment. This is the time for the church, for us to pray. There are many today, leaders today, those that God has put a work in their hands to do, the pressure all around, weighing heavily with tremendous concern and the images that are forming in their mind. Says so even if these chains are removed, what about these physical men and women that are going to restrict me? But this morning we are praying. The Bible says that the chains fell off from him. I said the chains fell off from his hands. The chains fell off from the hands. He was, the, 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 the angel did not answer the soldier. Please, can you excuse me? I, I need to talk to Peter. No, the, 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 the angel had no interest to discuss his mission with the soldier. I am not here for you. Uh, get, pick up, get up. And, so they, they, they saw the standing there. He gives them no visibility to recognize their presence. Peter was only answering. Peter was only responding. Peter got up. The chief fell up. He was walking out. The soldiers were still standing there. Why? The creator was present. The maker was present. The owner of their bread was present. I said, I am here not to discuss or negotiate anything with you, but to set free. Why? The church was praying. Are you that one that's praying? Are you praying for somebody? Are you praying for a leader? Are you praying for a body of Christ? Are you praying for a church? That's head down. And the Bible says he led him out. Stand on your feet. Follow me. He didn't need to come with the keys of those prisons. He didn't need to come with the keys of those gates. As he was walking, the gates were opening. Amen. The stronger gate has come, the lower gate has to give way. Amen. We pray this morning, the light of God opens any gate. Amen. The light of God breaks any chain. The presence of God brings deliverance. Amen. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, the spirit of God. The Lord came in there. Is there any situation in your life? Is there something that is holding your ministry down? Are you born? Are you born again to be a leader, a walk in the kingdom? And yet there's some restrictions that you can't really see. Let those chains be broken. 
let it fall off your mind let it fall off your thought in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus lift up your voice and begin to pray Those in prison physically for the gospels, Lord, vindicate their case. We are in the world today that the name of Jesus is so offensive to people that we must continue to preach it. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Break every chain. The Bible says the chain fell off from his hands. Who, what is that chain that stands in your life before the presence of God? He fell off. There are pastors afflicted that infirmity and the sickness so break them down. But that chain fall. It's to weaken them so they can preach the gospel. No, let that chain fall. The grace to stand there. The grace to stand. He said, Get up. We pray this morning, wherever they are, to rise up. Amen. To rise up. Amen. To rise up in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, he Peter came out and the presence of the Lord walked in into the city. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. We are still praying. Isaiah 45, 2 and 3. The Lord shall go before thee. Amen. Shall make the crooked place straight, breaking the gate of brass and the bars of iron. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. breaking the gates of brass and the bars of iron. Breaking the gates of brass and the bars of iron. Breaking the gates of brass and the bars of iron. Spiritual gates, spiritual iron, be broken and cut asunder in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare this this morning. Every pillar of your life be set free. Shattered apples. Every pillar of your home be set free. Every pillar of your children's dream and destiny be set free. I am talking to somebody this morning. Every form of physical and spiritual confinement they put into the day in the name of Jesus. Amen. We shall not walk around with chains in our mind. You cannot walk around with heavy chains in your vision. You cannot walk around with heavy chains in your dream. We declare that properly in the name of Jesus Christ. We're talking about the bounds of wickedness. Look at what they did to Samson. When Samson was captured, they had him down, locked up. They put an eye on the fire and dug it into his eyes and removed it. Not just removing his eyes, they wanted to feel the ball. You'll be fighting for God's people. You'll be fighting us all these years. We'll finally catch you. He compromised the devil long enough that he didn't know when he sold his Nazarite grace and anointing. He didn't know when he revealed the secret of his secret place of the strength and the power that God has given to him. The things that was released to him, classified information that he wasn't supposed to share with nobody. He was literally David. In the name of friendship. In the name of relationship. With the love of our care that was fake. The love of our care that was fake for money. God be the glory. Amen. The enemy thought they won. But when they had him on the pillar to celebrate him, 
in mockery and shame he looked up one more time and the strength came back Jacob who sat down they said no we thought we won we thought he's weak the strength upon him was greater than what they could ever see that he pressed on the on the pillar read that scripture read that scripture read that scripture you will understand the strength that God has given to him came back when they thought the shape the way began to grow that strength began to grow I am speaking to you today. I don't, it doesn't matter how years that we've lost this and the enemy have locked things down, you will go back. Amen. Your strength will go back. Amen. Your mind will be restored. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says he destroyed. Amen. The people, he destroyed the enemy more than those he ever did in his entire ministry. Not one escape. They taught the gathered to mock and kill him. They actually gathered for their own destruction. Amen. This is the fact that the Lord has chosen. We pray now so you don't have to pray later. Amen. Keep on pressing on. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, this morning. Amen. Thank you, ancient of days. Amen. Thank you, work of ages. The Lord is hearing the cry of the church. Amen. The Bible says the church call upon the name of the Lord day and night for Peter. The church prayed unto God for him and the Lord acted. Amen. As you are praying this morning, there's an action going on. As you are calling on the name of the Lord, there's a step going on. There are moves taking place. There's a shaking in your home. There's a shaking in the life of your children. There's a shaking in your future. Your ministry, your job, your career, even your health. Amen. Victory belong to the Lord. Amen. Victory belong to the Lord. Amen. Victory belong to the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. We receive you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. As those chains fell up, we stand as a point of contact to reach out and light that not those chains. Under that light we dwell. Under that light your life dwell. Under that light your home dwell. Under that light your children dwell. We are ready to go. That light shine it. That light shine it. The chain did not respond to those that put it there. The chain responded to the Creator. Amen. The chief is here. The chain fell. Amen. That chain has life. He responded. There's something about the chain. There must be an action. Something to place that chain. That chain has ears to hear. <laughs> Amen. That I have to let go, Peter. Amen. The chain loses itself. Amen. The chain will turn back to where it belongs. I wasn't supposed to be used on this man. Amen. I was used illegally. Yes. And Peter walked out. Amen. Because the Lord was present. Amen. Lift up your hand. If your eyes can look at something this morning and see yourself walking out of something. Amen. See things walking out. Amen. Walking in victory. Amen. Walking in triumph. Amen. Be full, be led out. Out of that prison. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 states, The Lord shall fight for you. And you shall hold your peace for this.